<coughs> about a month ago I saw an article on the news dealing with the concept of whether we can influence and change our surroundings by using only our minds and consciousness. There was a doctor in this article who was talking about an interesting experiment he tried with his daughter. They took two jars and filled them up with rice. One jar was labeled with an affectionate term, while the other was labeled with a negative term. Every day they would go and talk to both jars. The good jar would be praised, while the bad jar would be scolded. About a month later, the rice in the good jar remained fresh, while the rice in the bad jar turned black and rotten. So I decided to give this experiment a try myself and document it. Today is the 27th day since I started, and also the last. But before I show you the process and the results, I want you to pause the movie for a second and write down in the comments below what you think the results are. Just intuitively, don't think about it too much, the first thing that comes to your head. Got it? Okay, let's begin. I started with some research. I learned that this experiment was inspired by a Japanese man named Masaru Emoto, who asserted that human consciousness can affect the molecular structure of water. He published some works on the matter, but his methods were heavily criticized. I also learned that some people who've tried the experiment themselves claimed it successful, while some others claimed the exact opposite and called it a fraud. The more I read about it, the more I realize that in order to give this experiment an honest try, I have to dedicate my mind to it. So it's not only providing the right physical conditions, I also need to provide my honest mindset and emotions. I need to really love one jar and really hate the other. It sounds a bit silly, even to me, but if I'm conducting an experiment of the mind, then for the sake of this effort, I might as well put my mind into it. My problem is that I'm feeling quite skeptical about all this, and I fear that my skepticism will influence the honesty of my emotions. So what I'm gonna do is send an email to Dr. Alon Retter, that's the guy who conducted the research with his daughter, and ask for some guidance. So it's almost midnight, and I just received a response from Dr. Retter. He wrote here some very valuable guidelines, but he also reaffirms what I was worried about. He says, if you're skeptical about the experiment, it won't work. I'm just gonna have to counter this as hard as I can. Okay. On the first day of the experiment, I set out to buy the ingredients. Thoroughly clean the jars. Using the same newly bought rice bag, I added 3 quarters cup of rice to each jar. Then added 275 milliliters of mineral water to each jar. I labeled one jar love and the second hate. The third one I left unlabeled. This one is neutral. I'm not gonna give it any attention and see how it fares compared to the other two. I placed all three jars in the same room, so they all get the same temperature, same exposure to light and same moisture. So, putting myself in the right mindset for this experiment, I decided to place the jars in a fair distance from each other, thinking that this might prevent emotions from one jar affecting the others. Also, this room is gonna remain empty for the next month, and besides me, no one is gonna be in here and potentially influencing the emotional balance of the room or the jars. Every morning for the next month, I'm gonna come in here and take each jar separately to a different corner of the room. So, this one is going to be the love corner, and that one is going to be the hate corner. I'm going to open the lid of each jar and talk to it accordingly. I will talk to them in Hebrew for the slight chance that I might be conveying my emotions slightly better in my native tongue. So following Dr. Rettel's remarks, and for the sake of this experiment, I decided to go about this entirely open-mindedly. So I'm erasing any doubt in my mind 
and I will be conveying my emotions as honestly and as earnestly as I can to each jar. So yeah, here goes day one. On day three, the rice started fermenting. This foam formed on top of the rice, and there was a slight sparkling sound of fermentation. So far, this process was identical in all jars. And another thing started happening on day three. I just opened the hay jar, it started stinking really bad. The jar also stinks quite bad. <laughs> I think it's gonna become uh, very tough. <laughs> On day four, I decided to start showing the love jar a sign of affection that is not only verbal. When I opened the hay jar that day, I noticed that the foam turned to these gross chunks. while the love jar became quite clear. Nevertheless, the smell persisted. And the smell is just horrible. I don't know if I can... if I can open the jar. On day five, the smell became unbearable. <sighs> I decided from that point onward to not open the lids of the jars anymore. The smell is becoming unbearable. The hay jar on that day still had a bit of fermentation going on, and the slumps started forming on its walls. The love jar remained slightly clearer. On day 6, the jars seemed to even out. I must say that yesterday the the difference between the jars yesterday and two days ago the difference between the jars looked much more dramatic than it is today. While at first it felt kind of awkward talking and hugging jars, after doing it for a while I started feeling very committed and in a way a bit attached to the path I was hoping each jar would go to. Today on the 16th day, I don't know how strong my feelings actually are. I really am trying to love one jar and really am trying to hate on the other. But one thing I do know is that by this point I'm really feeling like I want the love jar to succeed and I really want the hate jar to fail. This is, this is something that I'm really feeling. Open the jar for the first time in 22 days and I expect the smell to be lethal. Right out of the box, it doesn't seem like the experiment has worked. All jars look the same, at least from the outside, stink the same. This is the neutral jar. This is the hay jar. So, let's see. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I'm gonna take out a piece. Oh my god, the smell.
<laughs> I'm really not acting this out. It. Uh, okay. Opening the hay jar up, one thing that I can see is that the rice pieces in it are considerably are considerably smaller. It's like they've been cut up. Otherwise, the rice is not rotten. It doesn't seem to be black. And the reason for that is that many times while I was talking to the hay jar, I was shaking it because I was really angry at it. I was giving it a a good shake. Oh no, I spilled some water on the table. <laughs> I feel like the smell goes down my lungs. Ugh. This is the neutral jar. Rice looks the same, smells the same, the color of the water is the same. So, what does that mean? The experiment evidently didn't bring any spectacular results, besides the smell that is. <laughs> now, some might say my mind and consciousness weren't devoted enough for the experiment to work, but I find this argument bothering, for many reasons. The main one is that it turns the subject matter into a religion, but I'm not gonna go any further into this right now. The one thing I will say is this, I'm a big believer in the power of the mind, but in its psychological aspect more than anything. I've proven myself more than once that I can achieve anything that is in within the realm of personal human reach as long as I truly dedicate my mind and being to it. And as a commanding officer in the military, I also learned that in the position of authority, the skill is transferable. What I thought of my people was what they actually became. When I believed in them as their commander and thought highly of them, we all flew sky high. And the exact opposite happened at the times I didn't. After this experiment, I can say that for me, it's not about being able to change the molecular structure of water or rice, but it's about understanding that we have the power within us to make ourselves and the people around us better, if we only believe.